I'm going to show you how to easily paint a death shroud terminator as an actual death shroud. Something that looks like death with black armor and a white cape and white hood. And I'm going to use very simple techniques that every beginner can follow along with. So first of all, he sprayed with Raidbone. And that's a Games Workshop's primer that they recommend for using with contrast paint. So we're going to start with a layer of contrast wildwood. And this will be very dark. It will be a good base to then go over this once it's dry with the next contrast paint, Shyish Purple. And this is a very dark purple, but it is great if you do this over this brown. It'll lose some of that reddish. I don't know what it is, but I found this out by first painting this miniature brown and then kind of going, well, no, I don't like that much. So I then wanted to do something darker. And instead of washing it with a black or a blue, I went over it with shyish purple and the result I get got was pretty amazing in my opinion. I think it's a very good result for very little effort. So let's do the shyish purple, let it dry and then paint the armor trim with warp or bronze. And this is kind of the last step before we go and wash the whole model and start working on some details. But I just wanted to point out a little bit here that I am constantly hitting bits of the miniature with paints that I don't want on that part of the miniature. For example, the hood here is brown on white. It's supposed to be white. I hit it with the contrast paint. It doesn't matter. It's perfectly fine if you do this because I know I'm already going to paint over it anyway. So. What's the matter? You can just paint over it. And I get lots of comments of people yelling at me for sloppy brushwork and having no control over how I'm painting. But in reality, this is just so much quicker than following everything exactly and doing every line exact. If you already know you're gonna paint over it, why bother with such accurate work when you can just move on quicker and actually get your whole army painted and on the tabletop. So in this way, we're now almost done with the armor. We do the armor trim, the armor itself is done, and then it's time for a wash over the whole model. And that wash is Decay Deposits from AK Interactive. And this is a grayish wash, but it will dry up pretty white once it's finished. I'm going all over the mini, over the armor trim and over the armor itself. And I use a little bit of white spirits to water it down on the miniature, so I can just use it more uh, as a wash than as the paint that it's meant to be. Now, you're not supposed to use this as a wash, or at least there's no instructions for using it as a wash. But I find that you get some really cool results with this. It, it will make the whole armor look a bit more bluish, and it will come close to that sort of cast iron feel that I really like for my Terminators, because it makes them just look tougher and less ornate than your regular Marines. And it's also a good first layer of weathering for the brass, for the uh, Warblock bronze, sorry, not the brass. So the first layer for the oxidation of bronze and so on. And yeah, you just take a look. Uh, I just wash the whole model with it and I make sure that there's not too much of it in the recesses because in the recesses, if it comes together, clumps up, it will dry up very, very white. And you'll have white recesses rather than darkened recesses. The effect is cool. You'll get some really weird looking decay and dirt. And I love it for these Terminators because it makes them look very unique between my green marines. But you need to better be sparingly with this. And then you can always add a little bit more. It's hard to get rid of it once it's on the mini. So work with a little bit of patience here. Now the decay deposit has dried up. And as I said, it dries up very white. Slightly greenish, but very white. And this is too light for me because I want the cloak to really stand out like a white death shroud with a lot of dirt in it as well. But it's just too much. And the good thing with enamels is that it doesn't matter. You can just clean this up. So I got here a cup of white spirits. It looks a bit dirty because I've been using this for a while. But you just load up your brush and you just go over whatever part you think has too much of the decay deposits and you basically rub off a layer of the decay deposits. And clean off your brush and keep going like that. The white spirits just reactivates the paint. Now imagine if you had acrylics, acrylics, and they would react to water. So you paint your mini with acrylics and then you just get water, you wash off the acrylics. That's basically what you're doing here, but you can't do that with acrylics. They become kind of like a plastic film. But you can do it with these enamels, and that's why it's so, so easy to work with them. You can fix any mistakes, you got too much on there, you just wash it off, no problem. And you can keep going like this. Do this a little bit, do this a lot. Uh, add more after you're done. If you take off too much, uh, remove let more if you haven't taken off enough and just keep going until you have the result that you're looking for. Now after this, 
Time for some rust and I like to do this early in the process because usually when I work with rust I work quite rough and inaccurate. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of typhus corrosion over here and typhus corrosion around the chainmail over here that's hanging down his crotch. And then I'm gonna dry brush a little bit with some oranges and brown. So the first uh, brown to dry brush with, Scrag Brown. And it's a very bright brown, close to orange, but not exactly there. And next up I dry brush with Ryza Rust. Super bright orange, so take care, you don't do too much of this. And in both cases I'm using this flat dry brush rather than the round one that's so popular nowadays because the flat one gives you way more control. It makes sure you only hit the edges, the ridges, and not the deeper parts. And for rust, this helps you paint rust, and it also helps you to create a highlight right away. This way you don't have to highlight your rust, and it makes the rust just look pretty good without too much effort. Now, uh, this is very basic rust. If I want to do much more intricate rust, I don't do it on these small minis. I save that for my plague burst crawlers, for example. And then you can really go to town and my maligni malignifier, miasmic malignifier, those things, the big uh, buildings, I got two of those. Uh, there, yeah, I go all out for my rust, but not for these small minis. There's just no point. You just want to have it look like rust from let's say a meter away like this. You wanna see that there's some rust on the mini and it's worn. Next up, a bit of cleanup because it's almost time to do the whites. And so I take a little bit of gray sear and I just cover over everything that I accidentally hit with the wrong paint. And gray sear is for me the right paint to use here because it's a gray as light as possible that still covers pretty well. If you want to use white, you have to use something else first because white will just not cover over this dark that I this this blackish color that I had first. And so all the tentacles they get a little bit of this gray here, but also here the cloak in this corner is just covered with other paint. Just paint over it with gray here, and then after that you can use white to go over all of that. And I'm going with the white all over the cloth as well and the teeth on the front plate over here. I want those to be as bright as possible so that then I can dirty them down and the, the grime stands out even more than if this were a cream cloak. So this way I also get a little bit more variety in my light colors, my white colors. Because over here I'll put these straps, I'll paint them white, but the wood of the scythe I leave this sort of cream color because then you get a little bit more variety. Now after this white comes Contrast Magos Purple for all the tentacles and fleshy bits like this tongue over here that's hanging out of the mouth. Now that needs to dry and then after that a little bit of Drooky Violet for some more shading and to give this a little bit of a more fuller color. And yes, I realized after painting this here that it's actually a chain. I thought this was like a tentacle coming out of his arm wrapping around that antler that he has with the bells. So now it is. And yeah, uh, nobody can tell me that this is a chain. Screw it. I'm just gonna keep going and make it look like a tentacle. And these weird nubs on the side, so I thought that was like the, the suction caps of a tentacle. And I couldn't really see his thumb, his finger over here because of the armor and the way the decay deposit was over there. So now he has a little extra tentacle growing out of his hand that holds that weird antler that he has. Hey, look at it from a distance. You won't see the difference. So next up, a bit of Athonian camo shade onto the wood of the stave of the scythe and all his hoses that he has. And this is just to get a little bit of green in there so that he blends better with the rest of my death card. Because my plague marines don't look like this. My plague marines, they look like this. Actual green plague marines. And my vehicles look white, the pre-heresy paint scheme with lots of rust and so on. Because I don't really enjoy having an army that is all the same color. I, I noticed something cool about having this massive swarm of all same looking army. But it's not for me. I just get too bored painting the same stuff over and over and over. So I like to vary. And I like especially to vary with elites. Like give them a completely different paint scheme. Makes them stand out on the table. You know, I'm painting a, a load of Death Corps of Krieg and I'm using five different paint schemes for different roles in the army. I've got grey infantry, I've got green elites, I've got red cavalry, I've got black officers and I've got brown tank and artillery crews. Because otherwise it just gets too boring for me. I need some variety in my painting. Anyways, I only a common shade on all the hoses and little bits of pieces, that antler over there, just to get a little bit of green in there and then 
I'm gonna work on this weird thing that is sticking out of his head. And in my army, these aren't horns or bones. These are mushrooms. So these sort of cordyceps that you have growing out of ants that then grow, go up the tree and then they explode and the spores go down and they infect more ants, you know that stuff. It's also often in zombie movies, cordyceps, they infect uh, brains and then they control the brains. Like my poxwalkers over here, they all have this as well. And so if I paint this on my death shroud or blade marines, Again, it's a way to tie them all together, even though they have very different paint schemes. They have these unifying elements all across the army, and they all look sort of the same. So Griffhound Orange on this. And now the tip of this Cordyceps needs a little lighter point, and I'm go going to use these light crusted rust deposits from AK Interactive, because they, they dry up a little bit, a yellowy, orangey, a light orange, and it is a great dusty look that's perfect for this sort of mushroom idea that I have for these. And it is also the rust color I use on my Plague Burst crawler. So again, it ties in with the rest of the army. And now it's time for Streaking Grime, another great enamel. And I'm just going to start here at the bottom of the cloak to get some nice sort of strip of this cloak completely dirty. And then going over the model, a kind of the same height, so along his boots, everything gets a layer of the Streaking Grime, but especially the whites. I wanna make sure that it looks a little bit dirty. And the head, not so much, because I want this to stand out. I want that, that, that shroud of his head to really pop when you look at it from a distance to make sure that you can recognize that it's not just a dark blob standing on the table. Now, of course, the, all the bright white that I have here on the weapon gets some grime as well. And I'll just keep going a little bit. And the higher I go on the mini, the less grime I use so that the top of the mini looks a little bit brighter than the bottom. Make sure you also get the inside of your cloak, otherwise it looks weird. And the teeth. So these teeth, I've painted them bright white as well, just so that I can yellow them with this streaking grime as well. And just keep going a little bit over the model. Put a little blobs here and there like this, like a little stippling. It will make the model look even dirtier and nastier than it already is. I'm gonna add some more nastiness to this model in the form of Nurgle's Rot. Of course, Nurgle's Rot. So I'm just gonna look for holes in the weapon and the armor that could leak this beautiful paint. And if you've never worked with Nurgle's Rot before, it's amazing. It is exactly what the name says. It looks slimy, it looks like it's rotting, and it's great to add these streaks to the armor. Break up the monotony, but also to accentuate these reddish parts of the model. So this tongue, for example, I'm just gonna add some Nurgle's Rot over here, and we have some leaking of it, and it will contrast nicely with the red. And same over here, I'm just gonna have some leaking down this fleshy chain that I made, and uh, I'll just keep going over the model. The weapon especially, it's good to add some to the scythe and make it look as if it is sort of bleeding or producing this slime, some here on the tip, there we go, other side as well, and I'll keep going. And then the next one is also important, that's blood for the blood god. And I'm going to start with a few streaks on the scythe, so just to simulate him having, I don't know, reaped some souls and on both sides, and then a little bit of stippling all over the weapon and his hand, just to simulate a bit of blood spatter. Uh, but this isn't everything. I also want to make the armor bleed a bit. I want to make it look like it's more of a living thing. This armor is fused with him and it's all alive because you know why else would it have a mouth like this? So I'm just adding a little bit of blood here to this mouth, make it look like this fangs maybe caught a hold of something in front of him. And I'm gonna switch brush, I'm gonna get something finer. And with this, I'm just going to accentuate some of the Nurgle's rot. I wanna make it seem as if there's something really, really wrong here wherever the Nurgle's rot is leaking out. So a little bit of a blood streak next to it will make it look even worse than it already does. And I'll make it look like the armor isn't just rotting, it's also bleeding. And not only that, the red accentuates the green and the green accentuates the red. Those two colors are contrasting and they are really uh, empowering each other. So the red looks more red and the green looks more green. And this way I also have a little bit more control over here when I'm painting the scythe. I can add a little bit of blood into these recesses that's pulled over there. And then we're gonna start working on the base. And just a little tip for when you're basing. If you spray your miniature white or bone, then it's a good idea to do a little bit of contrast paint on the base before you do the basing material. This is just to make sure that everywhere there's at least some color on it. And if you miss something with the basing material, you don't have a white spot sticking out from the miniature. And I used snakebite leather here because it comes pretty close to the Armageddon dust that I'm using for the basing material. But 
if you don't have that many contrast paints, you have a black, use a black. Uh, that's good enough and it just covers the base and makes sure that you know, any mistakes don't show up. So I'm basing here with Armageddon Dust and then after this I'm going to wash it with some Reikland Flesh Shade. And that will make the base look nice and warm, reddish. But that's not the only thing I'm doing. I'm also having some non oil open over here and I'll show you. I'll just take a little drop and just get a little spots there on the base in non oil so that I have a little bit more variety in my basing. And I like the, the difference that it makes, especially on these bigger bases. If you have box walkers, you might not really see it, especially because I'm adding quite a lot of plants and flowers to my bases with the Death Guard army. But with these bigger bases, with the Terminators, characters and so on, it adds a little bit of variety and just gives that base a little bit more than just a wash. So next up, Plague Ground from AK Interactive. And this is basically just not a texture paste, but it's bright green, as you can see. And I'm using this to sort of show corruption coming from the Terminator onto the ground. So I take a little bit here on a pretty fine point and I'm just gonna work around his boots first. And I'm gonna try and simulate the corruption coming from his feet, coming from the back. So trailing a bit to the back. And I guess it's a bit hard to see now with this mini but the idea is that wherever he stands he corrupts the ground around him and this one i really like this it gives a little bit more flavor to the mini and after this is done i need to add some nice plants and i'm using these two sets from gamers grass the orange flowers and the marshland set and the orange flowers of course match really well with all the rust that i have in my army so it's another way to get a little bit of color back onto your base that goes well with the rest of the army the marshland set it's four different kinds of green which is of course great for death card why wouldn't you want a little bit of green on your bases as well now i like to add these flowers and i like to have them a little bit of crushed when they get close to him. So I really push this down and then I'm gonna put one more up front that is better visible and is sort of more pristine. And I just wanna show how awful it is to be near the death card by showing these plants suffering as well. The whole place is going to get corrupted. And when these plants are done, the end result will look like this. A true death shroud terminator painted as if he's walking death with black dark armor and bright white shrouds. It's great contrast to have on a mini and I think they look really cool. The decay deposits is a very hard to use enamel. It dries up way too bright all the time, but once you reduce it enough, this black armor looks disgusting. It looks horrible. It looks like it's really nasty and unclean. All the other details is really quick and simple work. Just a few paints, just a wash with some streaking grime and that's it. A bright base really finishes the mini because I love that contrast between my death guard, the nastiness and then the beautiful flowers, life on the base and death standing on top of it. Now if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and maybe check out this video next.